Okay, guys, if you've been living under a rock, then you probably don't know about this, but a new version of Windows came out. It's called Windows 11. Now, originally, we thought that Windows 10 was going to be the only OS. Well, apparently, we couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> Eleven came out, and it's been out now uh, for a day ago from the time of the recording of this video. It's actually going to be available to development in a week from now, so that should be right around the first of July, mm -hmm. and then should start being available for general release at the end of this year at some point. So let's tune in and start talking about what we know about it and what we should want to know more about. Here we go. All right, Bobby. So spill the tea. Is there any sort of version that we can get our hands on right now today? As we're filming this, it's the 25th. So do you have anything that you're using right now to test these products? Uh, now there's a an early leaked version of it, but it turns out that it was a pretty older version of what's going to be coming out in 11. So I decided not to really kind of taint my opinion with it. So I'm going to wait for it to, to drop in the dev channels, which in the, the development uh, release section, uh, if you're in those channels, you'll have access to that in about a week. Mm -hmm. But then it will start in some of the other uh, available channels, it'll start being released. And then general release will happen uh, at closer to the end of the year. Uh, Specific time still to be announced, but it's looking like sometime around Thanksgiving or Christmas. And I want to show you something right here. Mm -hmm. uh, this right here. You know what that is? Mm, some sort of chip. It's a chip. It's called a TPM chip. Mm -hmm. uh, this happens to be made by MSI. Mm -hmm. uh, I just bought a custom computer from Cyber Power, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a pretty powerful computer why my dad and I've been very <laughs> happy with it uh, but one of the things that the computer has was an adapter for a tpm chip but it did not come with a tpm chip right. so first off what is a tpm chip so this chip has the ability to encrypt and save your information your login information so that when the computer goes to boot up it has the capability of unlocking it for you as the boot process goes to happen mm -hmm. and then close the door behind you when you shut it down. So basically in a resting state, your information is fully encrypted and no one can access it. Um, mm -hmm. So this TPM chip right here affords you that capability because it saves that information um, on this kind of like the unlock code, uh, a piece of it, it saves right. it on this for you. And, and that technology is made available by this chip and Windows. Mm -hmm. Well. Windows 11 requires this chip to be on your system. Now, a lot of the manufacturers already have it built in, but not all of them. Most laptops do nowadays. Mm -hmm. If you've bought it with the last few years, probably it came with it. One of the ways that you can find out is by opening up Device Manager. Mm -hmm. And in there, you will see security devices. And if you drop it down, it'll tell you that it's a TPM chip and what version it is. So, um, you know, that's a place that you can manually check yourself. Now, mm -hmm. with that being said, if you don't have it, if you can't get a chip like this to install, you're not going to be able to install Windows 11, period. Right. You're just kind of dead in the water. <laughs> and that's not really very clearly explained. It's just part of the system requirements. And then, you know, you go to try to install and it's like, wah, wah. Doesn't work, <laughs> doesn't work for you. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. So, there might be a couple of people um, that really do want to switch, but we'll still have to keep with Windows 10 because of that um, yeah. chip requirement. Hmm. I, w I hope I have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you may want to start thinking about getting an inventory of the systems that you want to upgrade to see if they need a TPM chip, because my guess is there's probably going to be a run on these. So. Um, if you have systems that don't have them and they have the, the ability to update them, you probably should get them now. So that's something to take into consideration. So how is this going to be released to the public, Windows 11? Good question. So 11 is, is it's going to be different than, than previous releases. It's just going to be an update. So it's right. going to be a feature update that when the update goes through to validate the settings, like, for example, does the system have a TPM chip? Does it have the amount of cores it needs? Does it have the right video and processor capability? If it does, then it will unlock that, fe that feature update to move you to 11. Um, if it doesn't sense the capability, it just won't show up. 
So then mm -hmm. what will happen is you'll just keep doing your cadence and updates of your Windows 10. It just won't be available. Yeah. So is this going to be like a all day update or like something pretty simple? How is that going to work on your machine? Yeah, that still remains to be seen. My guess yeah. is it would probably be a few hours, but yeah. I mean, again, it's very theoretical. I don't know. I haven't seen one happen yet, uh, but I am very curious. There is a lot under the hood that's changed, especially when it comes to games. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, Windows 11 now allows graphic cards to have direct access uh, to the disk uh, mm -hmm. for faster load times and other things like that. So that's a pretty big deal for gamers. Uh, if you have that big uh, Skyrim type map that you need to load, uh, so in, theory, in theory, if the app is properly written and you have Windows 11, it should allow faster load times. So mm -hmm. that's also going to be pretty cool. Yeah, interesting. So what would you say were some of the features that stood out to you? I've got, uh, I wish I could show you my screen, but I have a 49 inch. <laughs> it's too Galaxy. big. It wouldn't it, even fit on the screen if you showed it. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it would just, it scrolls for days. This is just a quarter of my screen that goes way over here. It's like way this long. It's he's 49 in, inches. He's living in IMAX level over there. Right. It, mm -hmm. it is massive and I love it. But right now I use Display Fusion to kind of carve up my monitor the way that I want. Well, 11's got some of those functionalities natively built in, which is right. exciting. Uh, now, Display Fusion does a great job, and I'm very happy with it. But it's kind of nice that uh, it has it built in, and it has some of those capabilities for when I dock and undock uh, that it works. Um, yes, I heard about the docking station. So apparently, when you have that docked and you're using a desktop to you know, have, let's say, three split screens on that one desktop and you choose to undock and go away, once you come back and dock again, it saves your setup and the way that you had those three screens on your monitor, which is really cool. Another thing that I think is really interesting that it's worth bringing up is that they do offer the capability, and I haven't seen this yet, so mileage may vary, there is supposedly a registry setting that allows you to flip the desktop back to a more traditional Windows desktop 10 style. So for those people that are more stuck in their ways, it is theoretically possible that you could put it back to the way that they might be more comfortable, but yet, but yet still give the flexibility for those people who want to have a more newer experience. So Kaylee, tell me uh, you know, a feature that you thought in the 11 demonstration that really kind of wowed you. So the thing that really stood out to me was actually how they changed the way tabs looks. The tabs are usually horizontal on your windows, um, but they have now a drop-down menu to the left of the windows that has all of your tabs broken down in that way. I thought it was interesting because I can't stand having to look through all of those. Something for me that I think was uh, kind of a shocker was the, the tighter integration with Teams. Right. And, and I will say when I saw that app down there, I got excited. I thought <laughs> that it was going to be when they clicked on that, a list of meetings that I had for the day and an easy way to click uh -huh. on my meetings for right. teams. Because if you watched our go to meeting video, which I can link above, we talk about how go to meeting has this really nice app at the bottom of your screen that has a simple list of your meetings and teams just doesn't have that. You have to click into it and go to your calendar to see see all of those. And so I was really excited. I thought that was what it was, but turns out it's just a way to connect with anyone um, that has that app on their computer. And it's kind of like Skype, you know? Right, right. Um, so like how Bobby was saying, it tries to bridge the team's uh, business side of things with personal. And that does seem a little scary. <laughs> So it's going to be a little interesting to see how they pull that off. It's all a mystery. It's all a mystery that we're ready to solve. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that I did notice is there was a word in there that I heard that was a little bit similar to something that Apple brought up, which was widgets. So I'm seeing some similarities between Windows 11 and the new iOS. So I'm curious if we notice any more um, when we dive into Windows 11 a little bit more. Well, and you, you also notice that the, that the bar is now centered. Right. Very much like Apple does the same thing. Um, so you see that. Um, the, the fact that the update is free 
Apple does the same thing. So I right. think Microsoft is starting to take some cues from the success that uh, that Apple's had. Yeah. Cat. I tell you this cat. <laughs> Last thing I would just kind of say that the aesthetics are very pleasing. The, the way the information slides over. Uh, Microsoft is definitely making a full force attack at the elegance and, and beauty of Windows 11 and trying to refine it more. I think they're trying to to remove that, I don't know, stigma that they've had that they're just more function and less pretty. And right. um, they're trying to really step themselves up in that game. And I think 11 really has displayed that capability. You know, it still remains to be seen how effective they are at it. Uh, but it does look very elegant. The information is there with the widget capabilities. And they did mention that Windows 10 is going to have an update in the future as well. So for those people that don't get it right away, there are still updates coming for yep. Windows 10. So do not fear. Um, they are helping you as well. Yep. And um, if you guys thought of anything or something stood out to you that we didn't mention in this video, please comment down below. We love to hear what you guys have to say about this. Are you excited for it? Are you scared? You know, let us know what you're thinking um, because we are ready to go through this new Windows 11 with you guys. And we're super excited to dive into it and um, get to learn it with you. So, and, and if you have some comments that we really like, we'll send you a t-shirt. How about that? Oh, I like it. I like it. Free merch is always good. Take up the free merch. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for listening to our first impression on Windows 11. We are excited to dive into it more when we have our hands on the more full version of it. Um, but until then, stay tuned until the next video. Bye, guys. Bye.